If you break your arm, you are immediately sent to the hospital. If you have a nasty cough, you take cough medicine. If you skin your knee, you find a Band-Aid and you walk it off. But what do you do if you suffer from a mental illness? There's no pharmacy to cure depression in five to seven days, no ointments rub away negative thoughts, and no cast that can reset your psyche. The school nurse cannot give you an ice pack and make the pain go away. This is a problem that many people, especially teenagers, face every day. It's a problem that is not widely recognized as the common cold or broken arm, yet it's a problem of great importance. In the past two years, two students from my high school have died unexpectedly. This has put a huge toll on students and staff and brought to light a need for more mental health services. Daily, as a high school student, I watch my friends and classmates struggle to make connections with others. I see people who think their life has no meaning. In Wisconsin, suicide is the second leading cause of death for those ages 15 to 18. Children are dying, not because of a bullet or a car accident or the use of drugs, but because of their own mental health. There is an epidemic plaguing our school systems, and that epidemic is mental illness. Students struggling with their mental health can make scary choices, including the one to end their own lives. Permanent decisions are being made based upon temporary emotions. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, don't allow anybody to make you feel that you're nobody. Always feel that you count, always feel that you have worth, and always feel that your life has ultimate significance. We must fight now more than ever to help these teenagers realize their lives have meaning. In order to help students struggle with mental health, we must be made aware of the signs of deteriorating mental health. This fall in my school, all students and staff were trained in QPR, which stands for Question, Persuade, and Respond. QPR is an educational program dedicated to helping people learn about the signs of suicide and other mental health issues and how to appropriately respond to them. If we as a school district work to implement QPR training in all of our schools, we will be able to catch the signs of suicide before tragedy strikes. An educational program could be the difference between life and death for some of our our city's children. Understanding how to respond to those with mental health issues is an important skill that we must learn within our society. This was made clear during the spring of 2014 when Don Trey Hamilton was sleeping in Red Arrow Park, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Don Trey had a history of mental illnesses ranging from a previous suicide attempt to schizophrenia. When Don Trey was given an unexpected pat down by two officers, he reacted violently. The officers did not know how to appropriately respond to behavior caused by mental illness. And in the chaos that ensued, Dontre was shot 14 times. Dontre died that same day. The children of our city are struggling with mental health. Unless we recognize it, our children will continue to die, whether that is due to their own hands or by the hands of those who are not equipped to engage with mental illnesses. By working to stop the problem at its roots and providing more mental health services to our students and adults or training, we can work to address this crisis. We must follow in the footsteps of Dr. King and work to address this issue of citywide mental illness, step by step. In the words of Dr. King, faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the entire staircase. Thank you.